All right, so the concept here is uh, we're going to get some ideas for, for everyone's blog and such. So I'm going to save this document. I'm going to put it in the network folder in a moment, but I'm just going to save it for the moment. This will be called blog ideas. Before I take any, 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 any volunteers, I want to make you aware of some uh, general concepts what you should be what you could be thinking about so uh, for example we have the series on a topic well I haven't made, I haven't made that available just yet I'm gonna put it in the network folder when I'm done with it and then everyone can access it so it's not one of these uh, drop down, on the drop down menu. We've also got, uh, we could do focus on one topic. So this is a series. Uh, we'll ex I'll explain how in a moment. But then we've got focus on one topic. And we've got tangential, ta tangential topic. So the series on a topic, let's say, I always use the example Victor's Bakery. People ask me, do you really have a bakery? No, I just make it up every semester. But um, Victor's Bakery. So what could I be blogging about in a series on a topic? What I'm going to say is that I'm going to have like the pie of the month. I can have also the employee of the quarter. I could have the recipe of the week. Notice here, I'm thinking of what kind of topic I could put out on a regular basis, whatever regular basis you chose. I chose three right here. Quarter, month, week. I could do day. Quote of the day. So I could think about once a month, I'm going to write a blog post about a particular pie. So in my bakery, we have pecan pie, we have key lime pie. You know, I could think about 12 different pies for one year worth of posts once a month. I could do either or, or I could mix these in also. So employee of the quarter. Let's say we've got a really interesting staff. You know, Judy is, is in our staff and she's getting money to, to go to college. So I could write something um, about a particular employee once a quarter. So every three months or so, write, write some amount. I haven't said some specifics yet, like how long should it be and other things like that. That's in the handout that I'm going to give you very soon. But just in general, some sort of topic that I can write in a series. The exact length of the series doesn't matter, as long as you can keep to it as best as you can. Sometimes beginners really get on their on track and write once a month their once a month project for three months four months and then okay I missed a month but I'll do it next month no problem so then they do it then they miss two months and then they start to get frustrated and then they don't come back to it it's okay if you miss a month or two but getting on a regular basis is better than not having any recent content you can have some holes in that schedule, no problem. And I'll show you the little dirty secret that you can actually set your blog posts to have been published a week ago if you'd like. So if you are publishing the the May uh, the May pie of the month in uh, in June, that's okay. We can set it that it was actually published in May. I won't tell. So series focusing on one topic. Well, this is similar to that in that I'm going to be for perhaps blogging about uh, old world recipes. So on whatever topic I choose, once a quarter, let's say, it's going to be that I'm going to focus on every aspect that I can on an old world recipe. This is grandma's, um, uh, what's that one I really like, uh, German chocolate cake. Grandma's German chocolate cake. I could figure out that once a month I could write something about that one topic. You may think, well, that's a big endeavor. You know, I could stretch it out in a variety of ways. 
because I could write about the recipe, one version of the recipe one month, a variation of it another month. I could write about people's testimonials about it. I could write about that time that we catered that event and gave them the best German chocolate cake that we've ever done. So on one particular topic, I can think of a variety of topics that are related to that one topic. So old recipe showcase, German chocolate cake. This going to be testimonials, recipes, history, history variations, etc. <coughs> so that's what I would say about the focus on one topic. Take one idea and just explore different aspects of that one idea. <coughs> so let's explore different aspects of one idea. The tangential one might be a little more difficult because you have to decide what relates enough but is not exactly that thing. So let's say uh, I'm going to be publishing once in a while a particular blog post. So I'm a bakery and such, but I'm also going to be publishing about my fellow local businesses. So local business partner. And they may be unrelated. They may be, okay, maybe it's food, but it's a Mexican food restaurant. But I'm going to write about them, but more importantly, how do they relate to us? Maybe how we're in this together. Maybe how we both started in that particular mall at the same time. How we both use the particular sort of um, uh, yellow pages ads together and that sort of thing. Just something is related. It's, in a, it's on a tangent, but it's enough to different. So a local business partner. Other things like maybe our cookware writing about our cookware on a regular basis. Obviously that, that bunt cake needs a bunt pan, so maybe we're going to be writing about a particular cookware that we like on a regular basis, once a quarter. I can mix all that in together so it's not the same cake of the month, cake of the month, cake of the month for a whole year. So variety. In my other document I'll mention that more, but variety. So if I'm mixing up a tangential topic once in a while with my main focus topic that I'm writing once a month for six months, that'll be interesting to my user, uh, to my readers. And there's other things and other ways that we can write, of course, but these are three general ideas that you can start to think about uh, to define what you can write about. Any questions on these? Okay, so now we'll, we'll take some volunteers. Anyone raise your hand? And what's your business about? What do you want to write about? What are you thinking about writing about? Any volunteers? Yes? Um, I want to sell women's scarves. Sell women's scarves, okay. Sell women's scarves. Based on what I've written up on, up on top over here, does anything stand out to you about these sorts of ideas here? Um, perhaps letting people know uh, something every month about the particular history of a particular scarf. So history of the scarves. So who makes them or how are they made? That sort of thing. The details to explain to people why this is a good scarf, why it looks so nice why it feels so nice, why you would want it. So very hands-on exp explaining. What's that? Yeah, so style tips. Or maybe accessorizing tips. So accessorizing tips, styling, how to style them, how to wrap them properly and such. Anyone else? What would you so would you be interested in reading about scarves? Like, like raw scarves in different cultures. Sure. Cultural aspects. Yeah. Cultural aspects. Patterns. Patterns. Maybe 
examples of patterns. So, what's that? The what? Materials, yes. So, definitely, um, materials. So, those are some ideas here. Just a little seed of ideas, maybe starting to get you to think of already what people would like to read about them. Then you fine tune it to what your particular ones are. Yes. So how do you mix the, the sorry, like the non thing? Like mm -hmm. because maybe I mix these like one month, so after one month we try right so well, I'm not saying you're going to write all of this in one post. Mm -hmm. I'm saying each one of these things could be one post by itself. So, for example, like uh, after one year, which I write, which I write the website continually. Style keeps changing. You know, the seasons keep changing. Something that's cool now or stylish now won't always be stylish. So maybe revisit some of these ones you've done before and see how, how they have changed through time. The same thing with accessorizing, for example. That, that accessory that really accented that scarf at one point might not accent it anymore. So see how that can change. Cultural aspects, that could be a, that could be a two year long blog post. There's so many cultures that could use scarves in different ways, something you can keep exploring. So, so there's definitely ways to, to keep exploring all of these topics. Um, maybe as you start to write it now, then you'll start to see what you can get an idea to write later as well. All right. Any uh, anyone else? Any other volunteers? What do you want to write about? Everyone has plenty of ideas on their own. Anyone need a little help? Yep. Yes. Um, voiceover business. All right. That's great. That would be. I already have the idea of equipment. You know, do it yourself at home techniques. So selling my voice as a voiceover, why would I want to share it with myself? Do it yourself at home techniques. So then it's voiceover and you're and you're trying to get yourself hired for a voiceover rather right. than giving giving it advice or techniques. Okay. So just asking. I mean maybe there is some sort of benefit in that, but I'll leave it here, but that might not be the most relevant here. Um, okay, so you're trying to get a job, uh, get hired as a voiceover. Well not well, yeah, hire the voiceover. I do the voiceover, send yes. them the digital files. Yes, as a voiceover artist. Um, so, um, probably then you have a demo reel. So, you want to write, uh, you want to probably create different demo reels for these different, for these different companies and whatever you're sending the, the real too. Not everyone is going to want to hear the same kinds of voice and such, same style. So demo real, um, I wouldn't say explanation. What's another term? Demo real expose, demo real explanation, um, analysis, so demo real explanation for the moment. I can't think of another word, but writing about the, writing about the demo reels themselves because, um, you know, it's very easy to send the, 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 the digital file and such, but to play it, people sometimes might not play it, so if they get a synopsis, maybe that's what I'm thinking, demo real synopsis, okay. writing about that. So it's going to be very utilitarian in that you're writing about what the, what the demo reel is so that they can read it before they actually listen to it, because it might be quicker or easier to read than to listen to. Um, I think it is important to to kind of about yourself, your your journey. your journey, your history, your experience in this. So, so basically, uh, like a user guide or something to like it. Yeah, I was going to write autobiographical, but yeah, bio, a weekly bio, weekly bio about. Do you decide about like what kind of stuff? So, uh, a casting call experience. Again, that might be giving advice to other people that you might not want competing with you, but um, casting call experience or uh, advice. But again, that's really others. Yeah. 
Um, but, you know, there's that aspect of social and, people, yeah. oh, I won't be able to reach an artist or for, oh, I'd recommend her because I don't think I'm qualified enough. Or, sure, yeah, so. A guy and they're looking for a female voice. Exactly, like so. Yeah, sharing that experience because n not, not every person is right for the right job. But if you're building a network, then you could get a connection to others where you get what you need out of that connection. Okay. Any events that can benefit from voiceovers? Possibly. Events. Events that benefit from voiceovers. So this is to sell the idea of people. Why would they hire you as, as a voice, a voiceover artist? So uh, hypotheticals, or of course, general, general benefits of voiceover. Yeah. So general benefits. Yeah, general benefits and testimonials. Maybe include videos of voiceovers that you've done. Possibly, but videos, yeah. videos of voiceover yeah, makes events. Sense. Mm -hmm. Video examples. Although people mostly want to hear the voice rather than see the, right. the person doing the voice. But here's some ideas. So then. Um, audio, yeah, audio files. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, here's some here's some ideas. That that's a pretty niche one. No one's ever come in with that. So. Yeah. Good, good. Well, that's why I asked. Yeah. <laughs> I like because I know enough about putting like audio up on, you know, sure. obviously you have audio with your voice, but how to actually blog about it to keep something beyond just the yeah. audio portion. Because mm -hmm. I know from search, search engine, but I do know about SEO, which is probably going to be fun. Is that I know, like, it will make them in video and mm -hmm. things like that, so there is some best way to have them on a video. There is, and it can be a, a, a constantly moving target, and that's why the more, you know, to hype my classes again, that's why if you take all of these classes, you get more of the bigger picture of the piece of the puzzle. It's also why I was asking blog specific, because obviously I don't have links to my audio. And yes. Comment over here, question? I was going to say, you can have a section where you do like a weekly analysis of other people's um, Voiceovers, not so that you're an expert. Oh, like the worst voiceover yeah. the best voiceover Critiquing yeah. others. Yeah. That could yeah, that could definitely show your expertise. Just well, like a like painter. Is criticizing other people. Some people don't want to hear that. Well, obviously there's the criticizing in a constructive way rather than a negative way. Um, but this could then uh, show, you know, you don't have to name names. You could criticize uh, give critique, but you don't have to name names, but the point is to build yourself up, not really tear others down, but to build yourself up by showing your expertise, like a painter would be critiquing other paintings. All right, very good. Anyone else? So if not, I can definitely also help a little one-on-one -on -one. when we get to the lab time in a bit. I can also help via email, so if there's no other we have so many other topics to talk about. That's not a niche. It's just it's like more than one topic. It's not pies. It's, it's not scars inside a multitude of different interests. Do they relate to each other in some way? Yeah. Trying to find that commonality to them that they tie together. Like, like let's say, you know, the world of fashion is so broad. But that can all be tied together because a good shoe goes with a good outfit and such. So I'm just trying to think ways that they relate to each other. But um, I do have to say, like what we talk in the SEO class is that at a certain point, you you might be too broad to really get a good target audience. Like I always give the example that there was a client that wanted us to do a website for him and such. And then we always come to the point about asking, who's your target audience? Who are you selling to? And the response is, everyone. But that's the wrong answer, because they are selling baby strollers. So literally, not everyone would want a baby stroller. They then focused on eventually that it was, OK, first-time parents, young Latino first-time parents. That's the target audience that they could then really focus all their efforts to. So perhaps if you think a bit more, you might have a variety of topics, 
or products or whatever, but you can still probably think about how to focus that a little bit more. And if, if you don't, that might be a difficulty going forward because then you're trying to reach everyone and in a sense maybe you reach no one. So target, finding a target audience is always important. And that's a deeper discussion for another class, but that's a general idea there. Well, at this point, uh, I'm going to save this file, if you would like it, into the network folder. I'll show you where the network folder is again, and I'll remind you that I've got a document in there, I'll turn the printer on in a moment, that you might want to look at because we're going to go into detail next time about it. If you go to your desktop and then open Computer, in the top left corner. So computer in the top left corner and then scroll down to network location classroom data drive Z, Z as in zebra. Open that classroom data folder and then scroll down to find my folder which is called campus blog. Alphabetical, C-A-M-P-O-S, campus blog open that folder, you're going to see the syllabus in there that I gave out earlier if you want a copy of it. I just put in the blog ideas a moment ago if you'd like that. Oh, I'm also going to put this other ideas that I wrote here, blog notes, there you go, if you want those blog notes as well that I wrote at the beginning of the day. And then I got this blogging WordPress checklist that we'll go into detail on it next time, but you should start to look at where it's going to be this checklist. Did I do this? Did I do that? The more of those that you do, the better. You don't have to do them all, and I'll explain which maybe I would recommend more, but all of them are very useful for you to accomplish, and I'll explain what does that one mean, how do I do that one next time. But I want to give that checklist to you right now so you can start to look at it, print it, think about it, and then when, when we come back next time we'll actually do it. Now that we've got a WordPress site, Right, this WordPress site that we that we created, we're going to have a, a place to write. That's the point of setting it up today. You want to remember to write down your password to this next time so that you don't have to create another account. But when we come back next time, we'll actually write some blog posts adhering to this list here, and I'll give you more advice and tips when we come back. Any general questions? You can. Yes, so if you if you go to your own email <coughs> and attach it and mail it to yourself, you can get it. If you need a help with that, we'll do the lab time in just a moment. So I'm going to end the lecture at this point. I'll turn the printer back on if you'd like to print. And when we're done here, we will do it again next time.